G'day, Dylan from the Byron Bay Observatory here. This video is sponsored by High Point Scientific. They sell Rasas and Hyperstars, but more on that later. I got a really good question from a subscriber. Would like your opinion on a Rasa as compared to a Hyperstar. I have a C925 and two C11s. 925 and one of the C11s have a V4 Hyperstar. As this is a hobby, I'm curious as to whether a C11 with a Hyperstar is equal to an 11 inch Rasa. In some of your videos, you have mentioned that you've used the Hyperstar, so I'm curious as to the advantages and disadvantages from Wayne and Lisa in New York. Thank you. This is a really interesting topic, and I haven't thought about it for a while, but should you buy a Rasa or a Hyperstar now in 2024? Now, I don't like reviewing gear on this channel because I feel like you can't review something properly unless you've tried all the options. That's not something I'm in a position to do. This is a very expensive hobby, and uh, I know what I use, and that's about it. But I am in the position of having used Hyperstar and Rasas. So I've got a little bit of insight there and I suspect a few of you who have subscribed to this channel over the years saw me starting with my Rasa journey and now I'm on a different journey with the C11. And it's not because I don't love the Rasa, I do. And I will have this in the observatory at some time. But right now I'm doing this whole thing where I'm going down this path of automation. I'm getting to the point where I don't have to go into the observatory. I can program everything and everything's automated. And I'll talk about why I can't do this 100% with the Rasa or Hyperstar. Let's have a chat about Rasa versus Hyperstar. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. If you're not sure what Rasa or Hyperstar is or what I'm even talking about, uh, basically they are astrograph telescopes, flat field telescopes designed for photography. We put the camera at the front of the whole telescope, which looks super weird, but it means that you get down to F2. And F2 imaging is insane. That is so far. To get the equivalent exposures on my C11, I'd be taking hour long exposures for stuff that I can get in a minute or two with the Rasa. So they're really popular telescopes, especially, man, does Celestron's lid latch system really bug anyone else? Celestron, make these magnetic. Imaging at F2 is magic. In fact, it's the desired speed if sky surveys, asteroid detection, near earth object detection, if those small transient targets are what you're going for, or you're trying to do deep exposures of big nebulas. And I say big because they have a very wide field of view generally. Uh, although if you get up to the Rasa 36, it's pretty tight. Now, Hyperstar is a way that you can get all the advantages of a Rasa and be shooting an F2, but you don't need to buy a whole new telescope. You can buy an adapter that goes at the front of your existing schmidt cassegrain telescope. And if you've got a schmidt cassegrain telescope, that's a really attractive option because it means you don't have to go out and buy a whole new rig. You can just attach this adapter to the front. It's essentially a focal reducer that sits at the front and you get a Rasa, which is amazing. But a couple of things to be aware of is that because you have the camera at the front, you do have to deal with diffraction spikes. Oh, damn it, Dylan, what the hell? Some people like diffraction spikes. And when they were a necessity, what I would do is string the cables at right angles so I get those nice diffraction spikes. But they're never as nice as Newtonian spikes and some people will try like a spiral method to hang the cables so that they sort of blur out and you don't get those spikes. I definitely don't like spikes, so I really enjoy shooting with the C11 right now because I'm spike free. But let's look at the main differences between the Rasa lineup and the Hyperstar lineup because Hyperstar is now in version four. Now that's very different to when I had Hyperstar. I believe mine was a version one, but also this is a version one and the Rasa lineup hasn't really changed. And internally, they might have changed some manufacturing and I think the focus rail system for the mirror. But other than that, they are the same products they released when they launched. Check out the range now. We have four Rasas, the 6, 8, 11, 36, and we have five Hyperstars because they've also got the 925. However, if you look at the F numbers, only one of the Rasas, the Rasa 8, is actually F2.0. The others are F2.2. 
Whereas the Hyperstar version 4 is now getting down to f1.9. And also some of the Hyperstar version 4s are using more of the image circle. So you get an even bigger field of view, which is perfect if you're using those bigger cameras as well. Now, f2.2 to f1.9, it doesn't sound like a lot. And in some ways it isn't, because when you're imaging that fast, we're talking about minute long exposures sometimes two minutes if you're feeling crazy. But in actual fact, over the course of the evening and collecting all the subs, the difference between f2.2 and f1.9, if you do the maths, to get the equivalent amount of light down onto the sensor, you need to take an exposure that is at least a third longer than an exposure that you'd have to take with f1.9. And a third is not a small amount, 33%. That's, uh, that's quite significant. If we're talking about an hour long session, you do need to add 20 minutes to that session to get the same amount of light. Now, of course, the other obvious reason why you'd buy a Hyperstar over a dedicated telescope like this is that it is changeable. You can swap on your Hyperstar. You can change your schmidt cassegrain to be f2, or you can jump back to the native focal length and f10, or you can add a reducer and go to f7, or you can add Barlow's and go to f25. Variety of focal lengths you can get an image field of views you can get is really, really amazing. And that's something I really enjoyed on the 925 with the Hyperstar. But the advantage of having the Rasa is that you don't have to reconfigure your whole scope every time you want to change. Every time you take the mirror in and out, you've, you are adjusting the collimation a little bit. I never found collimation to be much of an issue changing that mirror in and out. It was actually pretty good, surprisingly good. But if you are someone who likes to tweak and tune your gear, or you're in an observatory situation, and you have things configured just so, it can be a big deal to reconfigure that all for a hyperstar. Whereas with a dedicated telescope, I can literally just take my C11 off with all its image trains still connected, move that somewhere else, and put this on with a completely different camera setup. Now, the reason I have recently moved away from using the Rasa a lot is because I'm doing a lot of this automation and using Nina to change filters electronically, to focus electronically, all of that stuff. Um, you can focus You can focus the Rasa these days with a ZWO EAF focuser or the new Q focuser has a bracket now, just newly released, so you can do it with that too. But the filters, the filters are a problem. Uh, if you like shooting in monochrome, and if you were a real astronomer, you do, <laughs> then you want to be able to change filters. And over the course of a night with a Rasa, if you're shooting an RGB run or an SHO run or something like that, you need to go out and physically change those filters. Whereas with my C11, that's all electronic now. I don't even have to think about it. It's all programmed into Nina. It changes the filters for me, refocuses and all that sort of thing. So it's less suitable for automation. That said, the Rasas are generally considered good for beginners because you can put a color camera on there and not have to worry about any of that stuff. Now swapping the whole telescope out every time you want to change to f2 uh, might seem like a big deal and, and it sort of is, but it's less of a big deal than reconfiguring your whole image train. Uh, also, this is not a small telescope. It is bigger than a C11 schmidt cassegrain um, I think my C11 comes out to about here. Obviously, it's the same diameter. This is a big heavy telescope. So Hyperstar gives you that convenience factor to be able to change between your focal lengths and obviously you do want to do planets now and then. So if I had this in the observatory right now I can't switch to planets easily without swapping the whole telescope off. Whereas with Hyperstar you can keep everything set up and then switch between those f ratios as needed. I am very impressed with the Hyperstar V4 lineup. It looks quite good and every time they iterate these Hyperstar versions the field flattening gets better and better as well. Obviously that's related to your back focal distance, but the guys at High Point Scientific or Starry Zona, they'll spec up what you need based on your camera so that you get that perfect back focal distance and then you don't have to think about it. But the Rasas in general are just very, very easy to use. Hyperstar is also very, very easy to use. I would recommend both the products. The only decision you have to make, considering uh, you said in your message that you already have Hyperstar V4, uh, I don't think you would need to get a Rasa. Because you've said you already have two V4s, two Hyperstar V4s, there's really nothing to gain by getting a Rasa because you already have that set up. The only reason you would do that is if you, I mean, if you have the money to burn, great. 
Uh, if you want the convenience factor of just being able to swap the whole telescope instead of swapping the prime, the um, secondary mirror every time, uh, then maybe go for the Rasa. I'd be interested to see um, if there are going to be any updates to the Rasa range. I have no insights whatsoever, but certainly it seems that Star Arizona are iterating quite quickly. And if you are interested, you can go directly to Star Arizona, but I can recommend High Point Scientific. High Point Scientific are an American vendor, but they really ship anywhere these days. They have a price match guarantee and they'll sell you hyperstars, they'll sell you rasas, they'll sell you anything you need for your astronomy journey. And they get lots of happy comments in my comment section saying how happy they are with the service. And so I've got no problems recommending High Point Scientific. Use the links in the description. You can build a carbon copy of my rigs. Uh, I have all my gear listed, www.highpointscientific.com. I hope that helped answer the question. Uh, I do want to get back to using the Rasa. I love this thing. I did have great experience with Hyperstar as well as a beginner. That really sort of kick-started what I was doing with astronomy. Uh, anyway, thanks for the question, Wayne and Lisa in New York. You're very close to High Point Scientific. And thanks everyone who uh, have been enjoying this current deluge of videos from me. I'm, I'm sorry you have to see my face so often. I was sort of on a roll, so I've sort of been enjoying it. Um, yeah, and had clear skies last night. So I actually got some more data, which was really fun. I'm trying to think if I had anything else to say about Rasa or Hyperstar. I think I've covered the main points really. But yeah, it sounds like you've already got two Hyperstars, so you might know more than I do about this anyway. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope your astrophotography and astronomy journey is going well. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless, and we're all going to die. I'd like to take a moment to talk to you about this channel. Cringe. Mid. My kids don't respect me. They won't respect me until I reach 100,000 subscribers on this channel and get the silver play button. So please, like and subscribe. I stepped up. I stepped up. Right. I smiled.